Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Teresa, this is Lost My Thread, and today I'm gonna to talk to you about everything I made in September. So this month has been a bit of a mixed bag, if I'm honest. I've had some ups and some downs, and I've had some successes and some things that didn't quite work out how I'd hoped, but I wanna share everything with you so that you can follow my journey as it goes along. The first thing I'll mention are some dresses that I've already shared in a video I made about Project Dress A Girl. So there are some dresses that I made for some little girls for charity, a charity called Dress A Girl Around the World. If you wanna see more details about those dresses, I will pop a link up here. You can then add that to a playlist or watch the video so that you know what I'm talking about. But I'll show you because they were things that I made this month just briefly. So there's a couple of dresses that I made that were like a t-shirt that I hacked into a dress. This one's super cute with this little ruffle detail contrast ruffle on the sleeve or on the yeah on the shoulder seam and then a couple of heart shaped pockets. I think that one's a fun one and then I also did one that's just more of a plain t-shirt hacked into a dress but this one's a really fun fabric choice. It's got a little bit of glitter on there and I think that's a, a really cute one as well. I also made a gingham one. This is more of a summery dress with little ties at the shoulder. I've got some patch pockets on the front and this one has a little flounce at the bottom. So like I said, I've talked more about those dresses in another video, so I'm not gonna get into it all now, but I do wanna share with you the other things that I've made in a bit more detail. The first one I'll tell you about is my Winslow culottes. So this is my second pair of Winslow culottes. I made another pair in a tensile twill, so pretty different because it's different fabric and it came out pretty differently as well. This is this gorgeous viscose crepe fabric. This is from the Fabric Godmother and it's fabric designed by the Fabric Godmother based on some antique Italian wallpaper. I love the look of these. I think they turned out so cool. They've got this really wonderful drape, as you can see, really great movement to them. But yeah, it looks like a skirt, but it is culottes, it is trousers. And I will say that there was some good and some bad with this one. So they have some great side seam pockets, which I'm a big fan of. They got these cute pleat details that are in the front and also the pleat details are in the back. If I can find them. Yeah, in the back as well. So the issues or a couple of issues that I had with these, one is to do with the waistband. Now I am someone who does not like to stitch in the ditch and this pattern wants you to stitch in the ditch. So you're supposed to attach this waistband right sides together with the front of the skirt and then fold the waistband over and then have this section below that stitch line so you can stitch in the ditch and tack everything together. In my experience, that rarely works out. I frequently miss the fabric that's underneath. It doesn't catch. I end up having to go in and redo it and it looks really messy. So my preferred way to do anything that asks me to do that, and maybe this is my own issue, is that I will stitch it so that it's attached to the inside of the garment first, fold it over, and then I'll fold the front section or the sort of more visible section over and then do more like a little top stitching edge. So you might be able to see there's a little bit of a top stitching going along there. I just feel like that ends up a lot neater. And so I thought, I can do that for this pattern. Why not do that? It's what I do for usually like bias bound seams and things like that, even if they tell me to do it the other way around. The issue I had with this one is that there's a very good reason to do it the way that Helen's Closet recommends doing it. I don't know why I thought that I knew better than Helen. I know Helen knows what she's talking about. I trust Helen's closet patterns, but I just thought I was being more clever and doing what suited my own sewing style better, and it was not a good plan. What is supposed to happen is there's a zipper edge, an invisible zipper from the inside of the trousers. So this is the inside edge at the back, center back seam, and that is supposed to extend up to here. So you're supposed to have this part of the waistband folding back, basically turning inside out on itself. If you stitch it right sides together the other way around, you turn it around and you've got the zipper exposed. But because I've done it the wrong way around, once I was trying to flip everything through, it enclosed this zipper rather than exposing it. So I ended up having to add in, I just did a little really, I would say, half-assed slapdash fix because I didn't really know what else to do. And I've added a little hook and eye closure at the top of that, so hopefully you can see. It's literally just two hooks and eyes, and that closes it shut at the top. And when it's zipped up, I will say, on the 
outside, it really just kind of closes up and it doesn't cause any gaping or anything like that. This fabric, because it's quite fluffy, it tends to just push together as I'm wearing it and it doesn't gape or anything like that. It closes up and you really can't see. But I know it's like that. And I have this hook and eye on the inside, these two hooks and eyes rubbing against my lower back. It's not an ideal solution. If I was gonna be doing something like the version that I did of this waistband, I probably needed to extend one of these sections so that I can do like a proper hook and bar that goes back behind that. And I might end up doing that at some point with a different kind of fabric. I didn't have enough of this fabric. Once I'd realized, I didn't have enough of this fabric to cut out a new waistband or even any kind of extension for this waistband. So I'd have to use different fabric, which I can do. Like I said, I'll probably just add a little extension across on the inside, which you won't see on the outside, but will just mean that I'm not gonna have this metal hook and eye against my body. So that's the first thing that I did that didn't work out great with this one. The other thing is I intentionally sized up on these because I didn't want them to sit at my natural waist. The first pair I have sit at my natural waist, which for me is really pretty high. It's kind of just under my bust line and it's not the most comfortable place for me to wear trousers. So I decided I would measure a little bit lower down, which is kind of more like my belly button thereabouts. And for me, that was quite a different size. So I just sized up the trouser pattern. I ended up making the size 18 because that was what fit me around the area where I wanted them to sit. So I have a waist of 31 inches, hip of 42 inches, but the distance in between, I kind of go out quite steeply, I would say. Anyway, not the point. The point is it fits me in the right place. So that's absolutely fine but that affected the crotch curve. I knew it was gonna affect the crotch curve because it was gonna be sitting lower, and I ended up increasing, or sorry, shortening the crotch curve by as much as it was moving down my body. So say it was gonna be two inches lower than my natural waist, I shortened the crotch curve by two inches. Whatever I did was not enough. So definitely these sit super low on my crotch. So they're not on my crotch, they're kind of halfway down my thighs. So they're definitely not the perfect fit in that area. I will say these basically end up looking and feeling like I'm wearing a skirt and skirts don't you know, go in between your thighs anyway. So I don't mind and it doesn't bother me, but I will say that in the future, I will definitely need to shorten that crotch quite significantly if I'm gonna be wearing them as low as I am. So that little tweak I think would have made me like them more, but in all honesty, I'm gonna wear the heck out of these. They are so comfortable, they are so beautiful, they flow so nicely when I wear them. So I'm definitely counting that as a not perfect project, but definitely a wearable one and definitely one that I'm still happy with. The next one I'm gonna tell you about is almost like the opposite of that pair of culottes. So this is something that I spent a lot of time on making. I spent a lot of time trying to get the finish nice and neat. I did tons of hand stitching, I did French seams. I was trying to make the finish as beautiful as I could and I really took my time with it and I really just don't love it. And that's gonna happen sometimes. That's just the nature of sewing, isn't it? But I'm not upset. I'm still happy that I spent the time that I did on it because it's nice to slow down and take your time to get things as neatly as they can. And you never know how they're gonna turn out. It is a beautifully made garment. It's just not the perfect garment for me. This is the Sohow 7 tea dress. So it's by Sohow 7 Patterns. I've been looking at this dress and thinking of making this dress for ages. So it's a bit disappointing that it turns out really not to suit me. The fabric is amazing. It is a really beautiful viscose linen noir fabric that I got from Melanated Fabrics. I will show you if I can. It's got a gorgeous color, but it also has these really nice other flecks of color. So occasionally you get a little bit of pink coming through, a little bit of kind of a blue, darker blue coming through. I really do love this fabric. It has a wonderful drape, it has a beautiful handle. It's very cooling against the skin. This is definitely one of my favorite kinds of fabrics to work with and to wear. So I was very much expecting this to turn out absolutely perfectly and loving it to pieces. Now this I actually cut out at my parents' house. When I was in Chicago recently, I was hoping to try and make something in my mom's vintage Singer sewing machine, which turned out wasn't functioning well enough to be able to do it. But I did cut the fabric out when I was there and I filled a bobbin on that vintage machine and I used the bobbin so it was nice to be able to at least do that. The reason I picked this particular pattern is because it doesn't have any buttons or any zippers. So, and there are no zigzags required either. So I thought it could work well if I did French seams to be able to make it on that vintage machine. So I thought when I got home back to the UK and I had my machine, I have my overlocker, I thought, nope, 
I'm gonna stick with my plan, I'm gonna do French seams, I'm gonna finish everything by hand on the inside to make it as neat as I can. I added a really sweet sewing label. This is from a company called Intensely Distracted. It says slow sewing on there, slow fashion, sorry, which I hand stitched, of course. It seemed like the right choice for the garment. But I can show you, but not really easily show you like this. I mean, it's very difficult to see what this dress looks like, but obviously you'll be seeing some pictures anyway. This has a nice pleat at the back. It's a box pleat underneath the yoke at the back. There's a full yoke that goes all the way around from the front to the back, and I hand stitched the yoke in place on the inside. I'll show you all the way inside so that you can see what the whole finish looks like. So it's got French seams, whoops, French seams going all along it. The hem I also hand stitched, so that's a hand stitched hem along there. And I will say it's not completely invisible on the outside, but it is nice and subtle. It doesn't have like a big band of thread going across it. So I think that does look really nice. As far as the cuffs on the sleeves, I also stitched those by hand on the inside as well, just to try and make it as nice and couture as I can. So the outside you can see there's a little hint of those threads coming through, but not a huge amount. The yoke piece, I actually somehow screwed up and only cut out one yoke piece when I was in Chicago, and I really did not have much of this fabric left at all. I was really sort of trying to Tetris everything together to get the pieces that I need. So I ended up piecing together some sections for the inside yoke. So this is the inside, so obviously it's not visible from the outside. Hopefully you can see, let me just try and get this right up so you can see these seams. So down the middle, it's not supposed to have a seam. There's a little seam just on the edge there. That's not visible on the outside. I don't think that detracts at all from the finished garment, but I just thought I would share with you how I managed to make more from the fabric that I had. There's so much I love about this dress and I really wanna love this dress. I'm not giving up on it yet. There's different ways that you can tie it. I don't feel like any of them are particularly doing anything for me. I think part of this is I feel like I'm sort of swimming in the fabric a little bit. It's very oversized on the top with the drop sleeve and I feel like there's just a bit too much fabric in that area. The front yoke, which is an interesting design detail, I feel like is just a little bit peculiar looking with the waist ties as they are. I like the original design, I've seen it on lots of people, but I feel like maybe the solid fabric draws too much attention to the design, and I just don't love it. I think it's a bit too big as well for me. It's meant to be oversized, but I think it might look a little bit better if it was slightly more fitted, but I don't think that's the whole problem. If I tie it in the back, I feel like that makes more sense for the tie. The tie looks more normal, but I think the front still looks a little bit strange. If I wrap it all the way around to the front, the tie is just a little bit short. It is supposed to be something you can tie either at the back or the front, but yeah, it, it doesn't really go around me and give me any extra room to be able to tie that. And like I said, this is overall a little bit oversized for me and I don't think that it's the wrong size. I think that's just the length of those ties and how, the, how they're supposed to look. Let me know your opinions. I am gonna try wearing it around and see how I feel because it is really comfortable and it feels really beautiful against my skin and I honestly love that fabric. Like I said, I really wanna love it. I'm just not sure that it's the dress for me. Any suggestions, any thoughts on how I might be able to make it a little bit more fitting to me or a little bit more flattering on my shape, please let me know. But I feel like it's just one of those things that I'll just put that as something that I've learned as an experience and move forward. The final thing I'll share with you today is a knitting project. So I don't get these in very often. If you don't like knitting, you're all good. You don't have to hang around, but I wanna show those of you who are interested in knitting, I have knitted my second pair of socks. So I can show you on my little sock blockers. They are this really pretty, it's almost a similar kind of periwinkly color, but it's slightly more purple in the main body. This one also, it's so difficult to show, but it does have a little bit of variated color in there, which I love. And then the heel is just a nice contrast. They're both meant to be like a pale gray or a light gray and more of a, sorry, purple even, sorry. This is supposed to be a light purple and this is supposed to be slightly purpley gray, which doesn't particularly come across, but I still think they're super cute. 
The thing that's the most exciting about these is that I spent a lot of time trying to get the fit right, and I made these custom fitted to my foot. I've made a pair of these socks before. They're the I'm So Basic Sock by Summerlee Design Company. I will say that they're a really great basic sock pattern and they have videos to go along with it. So if you're new to knitting or new to sock knitting, I would recommend this pattern for sure for beginners. But I made my first pair and you're supposed to be working from the cuff down or the stop top of the sock toward the toe rather than toe up. I feel like I'm not really great with the terminology for knitting, so sorry if you're a knitter and I'm totally murdering those words, but I started from the cuff, worked my way down, and then you're supposed to start your decreases for the toe once you get to the tip of your pinky toe. But my toes extend a bit beyond the tip of my pinky toe because my long toe is quite a bit, my big toe is quite a bit longer. It's not super interesting to hear about the shape of my feet, but the point is they ended up too short, the first pair, and they are just a little bit too tight, which is a shame. This time around, I thought not only will I make them a little bit longer in the toe, but I'm actually going to hopefully try and get them to fit the slope of my toes. So hopefully you can see from the pictures what I needed to work with and how I needed to get that shape. So I just kind of winged it and it worked out as far as how I was going to extend the toe section. So my first thing I wanted to do to make sure I could do is extend the big toe section straight rather than sloping in at that side of the sock. So I ended up with a right and a left sock so they fit my feet exactly. And then also I wanted to make sure that the slope of the toe was matching the slope of my toe. The toe of the sock matches my foot. And I did a little bit of playing around with how many decreases I did compared to how many just stockinette rows that I did. I feel like it worked out. It's not perfect. The two are not even the same as each other, but they fit my feet. And I have to say, I have never had a pair of socks that actually fit my feet before. I usually end up having the Miss the other colored section, there's like a contrast section for the toe, angled so that it pulls up at my big toe and then slopes down as it goes down my other toes. And I always just assume that that's the way that it's supposed to be. Not that I thought that was the design, but I figured that's what I'm going to get with my feet. But these actually fit my feet properly. So hopefully you can see as well the shape. So it's more straight where my big toe is going to be and it's a lot more sloped where my other toes are. And it turned out, like I said, it fits really well and they are so comfortable and snuggly to wear. I really love wearing these. Now I can't remember the name of the yarn that I got. I'm sure I got it from Loop London, which is my favorite yarn shop. It's in Islington in London. I ordered online from them though this time around. And yeah, we'll put the name of the yarn up on the screen because I'm not great with yarns. I know much more about fabrics than I do about yarns. These aren't perfect. You know, it's my second pair of socks, my fourth knitting project ever. I'm still super beginner, but I will say that they look good. There's some mistakes for sure. I have no idea what the heck happened in this section of the heel. This side as well is slightly irregular from one section to the other. This heel gusset, is that the gusset or the flap? I don't know. I think this is the flap is perfectly neat. So I think maybe the first one I had some issues with and the second one it worked out a little bit better. But overall, I'm really happy with these. I have got the next pair of socks already on my needles. I'm making a very different pair of socks this time around. But I learned a lot from these and I love them and I'm super proud of these socks. I hope you enjoyed hearing about what I made this month, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'm bearing it all for you guys. I want you to have an honest look into my sewing journey. I'm sure many of you will have had similar experiences, so let me know in the comments down below if you've made something that you were super excited about and it just didn't work out. I feel like the amount of effort put into a project definitely does not necessarily match with how much you love it in the end. I've had some really quick sews that turn out amazing that I wear all the time and things like this where I took so much more time, so much more effort, and it just wasn't meant to be. But either way, we can learn in the process and still enjoy as we're going along. I hope you're all doing really well. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your support. I always appreciate you guys coming back and watching my videos. Big love to all my subscribers. Please do think about subscribing if you enjoyed my video today and I'll see you all very soon. Bye.